Hello everybody, I am uh, back to show you a few things I've been observing with these motors. Uh, I want to show you, I've pretty much got this 24 magnet uh, wheel going, so turns out it's, you know, it's 48 north-south poles on this thing, so it's not the monopole version of this motor, and um, you know, I'm getting different results I got. An oscilloscope now to look at the uh, waves coming off this thing, and uh, just wanted to show you a few observations and uh, show you the waves I'm getting. And I wanted to show you the meters right now. Uh, I'm going to zoom in, pivot over here. So uh, we got the. This is the voltage of the battery that's going to run the show this is actually a temperature meter a temperature gauge it's just showing the temperature of the room I wanted to show something about that in a little bit but uh, so the battery we're running everything on is the recovered one that seems to only like to stay around 12 10 volts at this point I'm slowly gaining on it I thought I had it all the way up but seems to be hovering around here but like I say slowly getting a little out of it anyway uh, I'll show you the voltage of the battery we're charging which is the lawnmower type battery uh, it was just about an hour ago it was down to about I think it was uh, 1228 I think and I've been charging it for a little while here but anyway uh, I'll fire this thing up Go for that. Let's get her, uh, get her going here, and then I'll turn the oscilloscope on. Focus you guys in on that. So, give me a second here. Looks like that's as close as I can get with the zoom, so I'll zoom in, read in a little bit. Alright. So, there's our zero point on that line. And with the scope or the probe I got on there, this is 12 volts for that big pulse line is so it's probably really hard for you guys to see might be able to make it come in better but we're getting uh, spikes right right there so we're almost at 40 volt spikes which isn't a lot but it is giving us that H wave that uh, I've been seeing and everything. Let's see if I can stretch this out a little bit. Let's see, I'm on. Okay. So I move it down. So there you can see the little spike right there. Um, which is that brief spike we're looking for with these things. Now let me uh, that's connected to the collector off the transistor. And I'm, I'm actually using a uh, bridge rectifier for the output on this thing now. So instead of just a single diode, I got a bridge rectifier going to the charge battery. But anyway, uh, here's the B signal. And this one is connected to the uh, resistor side of the trigger coil. And let me show you where zero is here. So zero is going to be right in the middle. Is there so you can see you got this big negative spike that's not quite as much it's only about 25 volts in the spike so it's a little spike but because it's an alternating deal it, uh, it's going back and forth there hope you guys can see that anyway wanted to show you that signal um, now you can see this uh, this 
big pulse there and I think that's because it's trying to be a generator so here are all the regular pulses and then boom one big generator pulse that's what I'm understanding anywho um, there's the negatives back to the positive one squeeze that up so that's that signal so anyway uh, I'm going to zoom back out here on the meters and so you, you know now the we're definitely charging this battery uh, not real fast or anything but we're charging it because this thing I figure why I'm getting such a small spike on the scope is because my coil let me show you this one here this coil is pretty much the same uh, as the one that's in there except it doesn't have all this sticking out it's just, just this little piece and it's only like 160 winds uh, on my previous video I thought it was longer but I, I thought I had a longer piece of wire I was working with so it's really only about 160 winds so it's a pretty small coil uh, for this thing and I think as soon as I make a, a, a bigger one with you know 500 to 800 winds then I'm, I'll be getting much bigger spikes out of it so that's that's my theory there and um, but one interesting thing I noticed you know it's going up to 41 or whatnot um, is that it's really hot right now we've we've been at 104 degree temperature I've had this running a little bit through the day but not too much and I and I touched the magnets earlier after shutting it down for a little while and and, and they were all cool they, they weren't hot in any any way so I thought well gosh you know are these actually getting cool in the whole process so that's why I got the temperature meter out and um, granted, it might be cooling down a little bit because of the wind and the eva you know the evaporation thing, but I'm going to show you the difference in temperature between the coil and the magnets, and just room temperature here. This thing, it's my little pro. It's just sitting here, me basically measuring this piece of wood. So let me shut this thing off for a minute. of the magnet and you can tell that it's a little bit less than room temperature so they're definitely not heating up see how it's going down to this is in uh, Celsius by the way so it's not real sensitive I'm just holding it on the surface of the magnet and it's definitely cooler than room temperature. And now let me show you the temperature of the coil. I haven't been running this that long but the coil is definitely warmer. Earlier it was going up to 34 degrees but it's cooled off now it's later in the evening so anyway thought that was quite interesting that I think because you're actually tapping into this negative energy that they're talking about it actually cools things off so so kind of proof of that. I mean, you know, these magnets are not getting hot during this process. If anything, they're getting cooler. Could just because they be because they're spinning, but nevertheless, I thought I'd show you guys that stuff. Show you the wave. Show you the um, 24 magnet model here. Fire it back up for fun and talk to you next time. Oh, well, one the other thing I wanted to mention is that 
this whole thing about it spinning one way better than the other, uh, I get the same wave pattern on the oscilloscope, even though I'm drawing way more current in one direction than the other, and it says it's putting out more than the other. And that's the other point I want to make is that having these amp meters in the in the loop, I've been removing them because they they take away from the from the circuit. So I've just been reading the voltage, making sure sure that it's uh, you know really charging the battery up. Get that going again, and now looking at the scope to see what kind of uh, wave and draw and all that from from there instead. So I think amp meters, you want to get them out of the loop because they, they're not helping anything and they're not really able to measure what's going on, I don't think, anyway. So um, you want to be looking for those spikes with the scope um, and take the amp meters out of the way, do some quick readings and then take them out of the loop, you know. You don't want them in there the whole time because they just they slow everything down. I noticed that the motors run slower and the battery doesn't charge as well and everything so there you go I think that's all I want to talk about great have a good one everybody